Hey guys, how's it going? Nick is here once again, as always, once again in beautiful Chiang Mai campus. And today I want to talk about something uh, very interesting on the topic of how to start your digital nomad journey. When I say digital nomad, I just mean getting an online income that allows you to travel either solo or with your friends that basically creates a continuous income stream. Recently, I've had a friend who has had uh, his own online marketing email copywriting business and you know, one thing that kind of kept brewing uh, for him was that, and this was a long time coming, is that he really did not enjoy reaching out, the, you know, the constant cold calling, going and applying for new jobs, getting new clients, or like trying to build recurring clientele, trying to build, you know, recurring clientele. It started kind of boiling over the top. He started reaching out to me and our other mutual friends where he said that he just fed up. And I know what you might be thinking, like, oh man, so sad for you, like you're making money online and you just don't like this one aspect, but ha it has a big psychological weight you especially if you don't build system to outgrow it or you know get over the hump and I think this comes down to when when I was hearing his story I think to me it came down to something that Gary Vee said and my interpretation of it which was self-awareness it was a really good example like encompassing example of like knowing yourself and playing to your strengths for example I love the Amazon game for me it's not necessarily the products that I'm selling but it's I love figuring out people's pains and creating physical products that's why I don't think I've ever been gravitating towards the digital niche whether it's software or courses or or you know SaaS company like for me like physical products I, I guess I'm a little bit old school but that was always the thing like I wanted to figure out people's pain and create physical products around it I get I suppose you could say that I dipped my toes into the service industry with the whole window cleaning thing but once again it was just like even there I don't care what the service was I was just like what is the pain point for you for example you know people like window cleaning companies they charge us a bunch they don't really take notes you know when we ask them like don't step on the lawn please or like be careful of this there is not a lot of safety precautions or you know it feels kind of very you know Bill and Bob grabbed the ladder and started cleaning or it doesn't feel professional so us as students you know we kind of added a double whammy where we're like hey we're also using environmentally friendly products soaps that we use to clean windows we employ only students from universities and we have we give specific like checklists of how we actually do like step-by-step -step safety how how our equipment works for example like a small very detailed note it's not gonna be interesting to anyone but a ladder you can attach special little you know these like side kind of ears to it so that when you're cleaning eaves you're not leaning the ladder against eaves but you're leaning against the roof and it's safer because it provides more points like three points of access instead of just two and it doesn't damage the eaves I know I'm nerding out but that, that, that's kind of like one of those examples and right now currently in my Amazon business I'm more excited about you know setting up the process of like launching new products how to manufacture products and I think where this is leading is me eventually selling my current Amazon business and then moving on to an actual original product that I get to design that I love and that I personally enjoy so it's like a an extra you know on top of it and that came as a result of me trying a bunch of things for example I've been working since I was 12 in Canada I moved to Canada when I was 11 I, I got a job the next day selling chocolates on plazas after that there was a series of newspaper jobs newspaper subscription Loblaws photo lab meat department a grocery store a Starbucks Zara B2 like I've covered it all and up until I was 19 where I got into a, a window cleaning home services franchise did that for a couple of years learned all the processes like that was really cool I left that for a while then you know the desperate moment of Christmas 2015 happened 2015 2014 I'm not quite sure and then you know I our own home services company happened and then Amazon happened so it's just like I along the way I figured out a lot of things that I don't like doing and there was a like a two three year period from my 20s to my 23 years old where I tried coding I tried an events company and I tried like a drone company just off the top of my head like promotions and stuff like that all these things that I tried I just ended up not resonating with and I guess what I saw as a weakness before actually turned out to be my strength which is as soon as I'm not resonating with something that I'm doing either I don't believe in it or I don't like it my skills are not compatible with it for example drone company 
I just drop it. I just don't do it anymore. And uh, Amazon just hit me really hard in the heart, especially when I was researching the products themselves, just the whole process of research and uh, finding suppliers and like, you know, getting the original product and getting it into Amazon warehouse and just seeing those couple of sales right off the bat. That made my heart beat faster. And I really resonated with that to the point where now I live in China. I want to launch as many products as possible. I want to work on original products that will actually solve people's pains or passions or purpose, you know, help them along with their purpose. Like I want to just create and that's what I'm good at. But my friend who I've mentioned in the beginning of this video, he hated sales. He is a systems guy. He is a process guy. He wants, you know, to be given a task and find creative solutions to systematize this thing that other people can then use the systems for and use that process for. Where this is all going is he now, after this painful experience, kind of understood what he wants. And now me and a few of my other friends kind of encouraging him, he went and started applying for actual part-time or full-time jobs. Now you might say, okay, isn't that kind of a step backwards? Isn't that, you know, everyone's looking to start a business or they might be looking to just be free and like make money on their own and be their own boss. But it's like, let me ask you this question. Is, is the purpose of this whole, I guess, digital nomad, I'm gonna call it. I don't like the term, but let's call it that. Is the purpose of digital nomadism, is it to be your own boss specifically and not work for anyone? Or is it to have the freedom and the capability to just travel to other places, see other places and work online so that you're location independent. In my opinion, it's the latter and not the former. What we're really trying to get out of is we're trying to get out of the nine to five in an office that has us locked down in one location and we have to answer to someone constantly, you know, hey, can I take a vacation? Hey, can I take, you know, an extra day off? Like my kid is, you know, is sick. Can I, can I have some time off? Always asking, you know, for mommy or daddy, who's your boss to kind of give you some time. Whereas, for example, you know, on the flip side, let's say you have a location independent work where you are more free as a contractor to negotiate your hours where it's like, hey, you know, I'm down to work part time or let's say we're project based. So let's work project based. But you find a job like nothing really changes. You, you have bosses and kind of, you know, or managers in, in both fields. But on one, you have to show up, you have to sit in front of a computer and your productivity is not really measured by the output a lot of times, but it's it's measured by you being there. It's predicated on you being there from nine to five. Whereas here, I find that a lot of people that have, you know, jobs from Outwork, whether it's part-time or full-time, it's more results-based where it's like, hey, we're trying to get this result in a week. So you still need to put in, you know, some hours, but it's not necessarily predicated on just like, okay, nine to five, you know, and bosses, because I've done this before and my friend Ryan has done this before, where we negotiated of the job remote work from home and still, you know, going backwards from that, like, hey, I used to shop to the office now, now I'm gonna to work from home. That's a lot harder than just to find a job on Upwork or elsewhere through a friend referral where it's already like a digital nomad position or it's like a remote position where you can work online. Perfect for coders, perfect for email funnel setup guys, perfect for Facebook guys, perfect for copywriters, designers, skills like that. I guess my whole point is like know yourself and don't necessarily try to be what you're not because I think quite a few complaints that I get or I guess feedback that I get in the YouTube comments and people that meet me through this channel is that I want to start uh, drop shipping, but then they have a bunch of problems with it. Or like, I want to start Amazon, but you know, these, these, these things are getting in the way. And it's like, maybe they're getting in the way for a reason. And you got to be very critical about that because I could be wrong on this as well. But you got to think for yourself is, are the reasons that they're getting in the way because you know, you're just making excuses and you should keep moving forward, but you're procrastinating. Or is it because something inside you tells you that you just don't enjoy that? For example, if you're a writer and you're trying to code, you know, and you're just like, man, I'm not like this technically minded person. I'm more creative and I want want to copyright and I want to create stories and craft stories. Maybe that's what you should be trying to find jobs around. And the thing is, it's like, I don't think enough people say this, but there's nothing wrong with working for someone else. The experience that you get, the first step to freedom that you get, you know, if you find a position that's like 20, 30 hours a week and you get two, three, four grand a month for doing that and you move out to Chiang Mai, like you're still working, you're still getting skills, but you're also like starting your first steps to living this life. And in my one of my previous videos, uh, that, that was a big point where it's like, what's the end goal, what's the next step? Maybe the end goal is to have your own agency or to have your own Amazon business, but what's the next step to get you closer to that end goal? could be working for Amazon company as a virtual assistant. It could be a copywriter for Amazon listings or, you know, a designer uh, for this company that designs logos, you know, and just like, okay, they're making, let's say a thousand bucks per logo and they're paying you 200. That's fine. They've put in the work, they got their own path, they got their own journey. Don't look at that. Just 
there is no shame. I feel like that's what it's been treated with. Like it's it's like if you're a digital nomad, you work for someone else, like shame on you kind of thing. And I don't understand that. I really don't. Like by any means necessary, I think that a lot of people, especially if you're watching this video, a lot of people, you're really not in a position to to argue. And you're you know beggars aren't choosers saying. So like really consider this. You know my advice used to be you know like how can I start Amazon with a thousand dollars or like how can I start something small. And like the thing is like now I have enough exp or, like drop shipping I have the experience now to kind of tell you like personally drop shipping I don't believe in it and I don't like it over the years I've tried it myself and I just really there's a lot of things I don't like about it if you guys are curious what it is you can ask me down in the question below I'll answer personally I'm like, I'm like I want to create a brand I want to create something meaningful and solve some problems or I want to learn a skill and apply that skill to work for a company and get more experience but also do really good work that I'm respected for and put my name out there so people know who I am so that over the years that I'm working you know my reputation is building up man there is really no shame in starting your journey off by working for someone else and that's kind of the advice that I'm coming to now where it's like hey man get on Upwork start uh, sending video proposals to jobs that you feel semi-qualified for you know charge a low rate get some customers you know maybe up front explain to them like hey you know uh, you could I guess like hey I'm still kind of new but like I wouldn't recommend it just do the work don't charge a lot if you make mistakes uh, you know tell the person like hey I'll gladly redo it if there's something you're not happy with you gotta eat a lot of crap before you know you you start Again, like don't let your ego get in the way where it's like right at the gate like boom I want to start making a lot of money you know or like I want to be at the finish line before I even start like really think about it as like the next step like swallow your ego if you really want this this is kind of like the most logical easiest way to get there there's really no shortcuts unless you know I, I know a few guys they jumped on the whole fidget spinner thing they made a bunch of money but it's like that's not really the point the end goal is not the point in my personal opinion I think it's you starting to get moving starting to get momentum and slowly learning how that's done and how to build that personally that's what I subscribe to you know it's just like like looking at the long term and that's once again another one of Gary Vee saying you know it's like look long term and and focus on the journey not in the next six months but in the next six years so it's like you know patient in the ma macro you know agile in the micro I think he says something along those lines and you know I would really suggest that that's kind of the path that you should really consider subscribing to because if you start being a bit more self-aware of like okay here's kind of the thing I want to do I'm not quite sure let's try working for this company you try working for them for a couple of months six months let's say okay it didn't work out step back or while you're working for that company uh, apply for other jobs remote work positions which is by the way I think that's how Kiefer got started how to fail at everything and still live big so that book was Kiefer's original starting point and one of the big things that, that was his personal takeaway after you know us talking is that you know apply for jobs any jobs get the job that that's fairly good for you and then from that job keep applying to better better jobs like the application process never stops like do not stagnate keep reaching for better and bigger positions and I know it's a bit cutthroat but just just read the book he explains it really well in terms of like the company like you're a worker for the company so it's kind of like a deal between the two of you like they owe you no loyalty and you don't owe them any loyalty so just keep applying for better bigger better things until you find that one place where you're like okay I'm working here I'm, I'm, I'm getting good skills like I'm getting a really good pay they're fulfilling all my needs for now and keep going of course you have to have some humility about it just you know let them know that it's like hey you know I might be quitting in a month or something like don't just like okay screw you like I'm gone you know treat people that give you opportunities with respect as well because you never know where when you might need that contact again or where you, your paths are gonna cross life is pretty long and you'd be surprised how small this world is but this is kind of the thinking that I want you to start adapting is that kind of by all means necessary you know start with a small part-time or full-time remote position uh, get out here see what the world's like I don't care how old you are you know you're never too too old to start this you know if this is something you want that's how you start it you save some money maybe you you grow your agency you develop skills but just don't think too far in the future if you have an end goal perfect but all you really need is the next step the next step that'll get you closer to kind of sort of what you think you like and on the way there if somehow that changes you can always pivot it and keep going I think the, the thing the, the main most important thing to do is to just get started and to go anywhere in any direction eventually path will present itself 
I think one of the th one of the big examples from my personal life that I can relate is when I tried drop shipping. You know, I was very hesitant. I was talking to Ryan constantly, and this went on for weeks. Where I'm like, man, I really want to. You know, I have Amazon going, and I like working on Amazon, but I also want to diversify my portfolio. I want to go after drop shipping, set up drop shipping store, and like the things that I learned. But but if I go drop shipping, like I'm I'm leaving Amazon alone. Like what about these things? And basically, Ryan's advice was, hey man, just pick one thing, anything, either Amazon or drop shipping. Doesn't matter. Flip a coin if you have to, but just start on something something and commit to it for a month and then at the end of that month you review and basically say to yourself do I want to keep going with this or am I not learning enough you know pivot into something else and that's something that both of us actually got directly from Taylor Pearson which I keep ranting about it anti-fragile life report all of you should do it he actually has an Amazon book that's free that you can download and it's like three little guides that he wrote into one amazing guy amazing advice like I highly highly recommend it do the Taylor Pearson report and he recommends like every month you know for that month, like just set your one goal at the end of the month and just get tunnel vision and, and don't look at anything else and just keep moving towards that one thing. You know, whether it's job application, whether it's growing your business, whether it's starting your agency or just getting your affairs in order before you leave, just one goal, you know, put your hand, head on the water and just keep drilling. And then at the end of that month, come up for air, take a weekend off and just reassess everything that happened in the past month. Do you want to keep moving in that same direction or do you want to pivot it? I think that that's a much better, uh, that, that's a much better way or, or path to, to kind of try things step by step very slowly rather than sitting on your ass and just thinking of all the possibilities and choosing none and not applying yourself towards any direction and just constantly thinking day to day what could have been while you're talking with your friends over bar beers you know Friday Saturday night generalizing here but that's kind of what tends to happen you know that's like the stereotype right of the unfulfilled 20 something 30 something year old you know man or woman so that's kind of the message of this video is that I want you to really think about self-awareness and try a bunch of things especially if you're in your 20s and 30s and the reason why I include 30s is like if you've kind of slept through your 20s 30s uh, I, I think personally is like I'm super looking forward to my 30s like 30s gonna be awesome as long as you keep in shape and you don't have any major life crises like 30s are gonna be dope and I'm so excited for it and uh, you know but if you've kind of slept through your 20s yeah you got a bit of regret you can't get that time back might as well start now like forget about pretend like you're 22 if that helps you know but like 20s 30s you know whatever 40s like just start assessing yourself like if you're 30 or 40 like the plus the huge plus that you have is that you tried a bunch of things and you know what you don't like you know you've come to a conclusion like oh I don't like sitting around drinking beer with my friends like I don't like this you know I don't like to be in one place for too long or I don't like to travel like that could be it too you know don't don't limit yourself to other people's expectations just figure out what you don't like so that way you can start forming an idea of what you might like and have that hypothesis of like I might like XYZ take a next step towards it or you know resolve yourself to do one month of work towards that goal and then come up for air and then look around and think okay did I actually like it did I actually enjoy it? do I want to keep going or not and that's where I'm probably gonna end it I know I've spun around in circles but this is like this this has been a big topic for me and my friends kind of talking about it so there is really no shame guys apply for part-time jobs work for someone get an experience get a remote job so that your time is free and you start getting into that mentality of you know I can travel I don't have to show up to an office like that's a beautiful feeling and that's a really good start even if you don't know or where to start from or you haven't ever experienced anything like that so I hope this video helped you guys if you got some value give it a like of course I'd love to hear more in the comments because I know that majority of the people that subscribe to this channel are 20 30 year old males so I'd love to hear your guys perspective maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm full of shit I'd love to hear it anyway kind of what helps me grow as well I love interacting with people that watch my videos so yep I hope this was a good one this is where my head's at beautiful Chiang Mai University I'll see you guys later